Welcome to Friday 13th YouTube channel, Metalheads. Today, I've got a fantastic interview for you. This is by DGM. Now, recently, he just interviewed guitarist Simone, who was about to release their new album called Life on Frontier Records on the 17th of November of this year, which is a brilliant follow-up to the previous albums. Now, I had a little bit of a technical issue at my end on this interview, but the interview is fantastic. So, Simone, thank you for the interview. Please enjoy Metalheads. Please share. Please leave comments. And I'd also like to thank Gary for setting up the interview. Thanks for watching, Matt Heads. Be safe. More interviews coming soon. Right. Hi, everybody. We're talking to Simone from DGM. Welcome to Friday 13. Now, this is the second interview we've done, as you know, but this is the first one on YouTube. So, first of all, I'm going to ask you um, congratulations on your new album that's coming out very soon called Life. It's going to be released on the 17th of November on Frontiers. Yep. So are you, you looking are you looking um, forward to this album being released and kind of what reaction you're looking forward to? Of course. I mean, every time you do an album, you you're just so anxious to to hear all the all the people's comments because you know, I think I wrote the songs like two years ago. So to me it's like they're they're already old, you know. But but no one no one heard the songs uh, except for the bands, for the labels. So it's always it's always, yeah, I mean you have a lot of expectation, you know, because you put heart and soul in every song, in every process of the making the album. So hopefully the people will enjoy, will enjoy. Okay, then. So, I mean, since we last did the interviews for the last album, Tragic Separation, so how successful was that album for you in, in, in sales or sales and touring? Did you do any gigs or tours with this album? Well, to be completely honest, we, we were expecting... You know, we always expect it to go up a little in sales and stuff, you know, you know, like like growing as a band. And we always did that, you know, but this is this was the first time, even if I um, if I think that the album was really cool, I mean, the quality was good. It was a step back compared to the previous one, The Passage, which was probably our most successful album because we did all kind of all countries you know like japan usa europe tour and uh, live dvd and whatever and i mean of course we can blame uh, we can blame the covid because we we basically didn't tour it was the first time in our career that we didn't play live shows for in support of an album we only did one show in switzerland which was great a festival and then the second uh, the second lockdown happened and in Italy was really bad, you know, so it's like it, you only could play, you know, some something in the summer. But we after the second lockdown, we, we already since I already written all the songs for this for this new album, we thought, OK, maybe it's time to record them since we don't want to to three years to pass because, you know, we're we're not a band. We, we don't live. Uh, close to each other we we all live like uh the, the my singer lives like eight hours drive from me and the other guys lives live like six hours drive from me so we're not a band that we constantly rehearsing so if we decide that we go out to play all our free spare time you know the weekends and stuff we have to spend that time to play together and then go out and play so we just decided okay we have these songs ready written already written so it's time it's better for us to 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 hit the studio and record them but having said that it's not that the album went bad you know it's just that it didn't progress as as it always happened in the past you know so we we, we stayed in the same at the same level which is i mean you know every band is always complaining you know everybody wants to be bigger of course but we we kind of know what's what's going on with with this kind of music, you know, the progressive kind of style. It's not the most commercial stuff. So we like we love to have our own niche, and I think our followers love what we do, and and it's good for me. I I don't need to 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 go to play stadium or whatever. I always prefer to have a, a small club but with people filled with people that love the music and know the song. Okay, and so, I mean, obviously, like you said, you didn't really do any touring for the last album. When you do the yeah. new album, when you play live for the Life album, do you think of, like, doing a back-to-back -back album? Because you've, you've lost out on the time with COVID. Do you think of, like, doing both albums back-to-back? -back? 
Would that be a good idea? Yeah, it could be. I mean, I mean, we, as you said, we really didn't promote the the, the tragic separation album, which which is an album we love. I, it's probably one of my favorite, except the new one, of course. <laughs> but and but you know, we we have to when 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 it's time to to choose the set list, it's always a struggle because it's been a, quite a while since we we play together and we have a, a bunch of song to to choose from. And definitely the set list will be more towards the last, the latest two albums, two or three albums. Okay. I mean, you, you, joined, you joined the band in 2007 for the set, different separate yeah. shapes, didn't you? How, how, how did you feel about joining the band back then? Was you excited? Did, did that first yeah, al because, that album have a big impact on you? Yeah, because totally. Because, you know, I was playing guitar in my bedroom, basically. I had a band uh, with a bunch of friends and we did... We did a, a, an album with an unknown label, and it, for, to me, it was it was the beginning in the business. You know, I was 24, 25, and these guys called me, and they already played big festivals like Gods of Metal. They were doing, they were selling a lot in Japan, and everybody in Italy knew DGM. You know, of course, I was more into the heavier side of heavy metal. You know, I was listening to more like like Nevermore, and you know the heavy stuff. But of course, I always loved the Ingve Malmsteen, all that kind of stuff. That DJM were really fan of those of those artists. So I said, "Why not?" You know, it's 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 not that I joined Metallica and my life will will change, of course. But it actually changed because in a few months I was playing Gods of Battle in Italy, supporting Heaven and Hell with Ronnie Dio and Dream Theater, Symphony X, and from all those gigs. Even my professional career changed because I knew a lot of artists that I then produced and mixed. And every festival we play, you know, you make connection and you know people, and that's crucial to to an artist and a producer's career. So, yeah, it didn't change my life in terms of having a big villa and and a big pool in the, in the backyard, but it changed my life professionally and. Artistically, I, I never thought I could have, I would have the chance to play in Japan and USA. To me, they, they, these were like dreams, like unreachable dreams, but then it happened, everything happened. So again, I'm not, we're always complaining about, oh, being underestimated or whatever, you know, but but in the end we did everything we liked and, and I hope we, we will continue to do even in, in the future, in the future. Right, I'm going to ask you a question. Why is it um, Italian bands all sound symphonic and very... There's something about Italian music, heritage. What is it with Italian heritage that makes all the bands want to be symphonic? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I we're probably the only metal band nowadays that we don't use orchestras or stuff like that. But yeah, I, I, I know what you mean because I mix dozens and hundreds of bands which which are from Italy and they're pretty much all symphonic orchestral. I think it's up, you know, we in America, I guess they have all the blues influence, Nashville country stuff. Every country has its own, its own uh, legacy, you know, like background. And in Italy, basically you have opera and classical music. All the classical composers are from Italy. And also in pop music, we have this big, this big, um, how do you say, like um, music festival that goes on TV every year since forever. It's called Sanremo, and it's the biggest happening in music in Italy. And it's always been like pop artists supported by an orchestra. So, and it's the most watched show in Italy. You know, so even when I was a kid, I remember. Even if my father was listening to Jimi Hendrix, Clapton, and and all the the great the great artists from the seventies and sixties, I was constantly surrounded by you know orchestral and melodic music. You know, there's so melodic, so much melodic stuff in Italy. All the classics, all the classic Italian artists. Then, even in school, when you do a when you if you choose music uh, class, they make you play like you know flute. And it's the same and, in England. It's the same in England. Yeah. And you basically learn all the, you know, uh, I do say like the Beethoven, uh, Joy in whatever, I don't remember the name. 
but you know, you, you learn all the basic melodies that are all from the classical music. So I think that's that's the reason. Okay. So, I mean, do you ever get fed up of being classed as a, a symphony, Italian Symphony X? Because a lot of people compare <laughs> to Symphony X. Does that kind of piss you off? No, never. It never been, actually. You know, nowadays a little bit more, because I think, I personally think, I don't want to sound like, like uh, how do you say, like arrogant or whatever. I think in the in the past years, we kind of developed our own, style i mean we didn't invent anything I, i'm not here saying that oh we're doing a new music that no nobody ever did of course you know we're just mixing different elements from different bands but you know there's a lot of time when i'm when i play my songs to my friends and stuff they always say lately oh this is so dgm and that's the best compliment i can get and of course as soon as they hear certain riffs or certain patterns, or especially solos, it's gonna come up the same names all the time. You know, Michael Romeo, John Petrucci, and it's fine. I mean, they're the best. They're like, like, there's not, there's no one better than them in the genre. So to me, it's always a compliment. But you know, when you read some, when you read some reviews, and you can really tell that they didn't listen to the album carefully. Maybe they listened to a few songs that are more similar to Symphony X. Then it's it's the usual, all oh, the Italian Symphony X. And I think most of the time it's not in a bad way. You know, it's like Symphony X are probably my favorite metal band in the genre. So, and I'm a big fa big friend of Michael Romeo now. So it's it's a pleasure and it, it's it's a real compliment. But, you know, I think, and, and, and with the next album too, because I don't know if I mentioned during the lockdown, I, we wrote two albums actually. Okay. And one is live, and the next one, which in the beginning the idea was to to put out, you know, like a double album, because the second one is way more old school prog, you know, with a lot of acoustics, mellotrons, no double bass, no big wall of guitars. I mean, yeah, of course there's distorted guitars, but it's not like brutal, heavy speed stuff. You know, there's a lot of more atmospheric. And my idea was to, you know, because lately I've been listening more to to that kind of prog, you know, from King Crimson to Rush, Yes, uh, Kansas, all the 70s stuff. Even the newest, the newer prog, like Stephen Wilson, Porcupine Tree. These are my favorite music right now. So I was starting to write more in more in that vein, but then I was having a lot of song in more in the DGM usual style. And I thought, oh, why don't we put out like a double, like Opeth did, you know, like, the heavy one and the soft one, but then it was way too long, and and so we decided, okay, we put out live, and then maybe I don't know, in six eight months we'll put out the new one, and I'm pretty sure I can wait for that one too because that will be probably the first time that no one will mention Symphony X because there's really nothing about Symphony X in that album. Oh, interesting. So it's interesting to know that you've got like two albums actually recorded, but one's going to be coming yeah. out later. Do you, yeah. do you have a title for the next one? Yeah, but it's still in progress. So I I've, don't I've got a title for you, Simone. Why don't you call it Afterlife? <laughs> Life, yeah, Afterlife? But, yeah, right, right. You know, in the beginning, when we were writing lyrics for, for Life, we thought, oh, why don't we do, as you said, like two albums connected, you know? But then, you know... The music was really, there's really little things in common. So, and it was like a concept album of 20 songs for a non, non English language band. <laughs> it's hard for us to come up with an intricate story. So, we, we decided to do a regular album. And then, because we don't know how the fans and the listener will react, you know, everybody that is expecting another album like Tragic Separation of Life will not be happy, but maybe it will be happy because the songs are great. Who knows, you know, so we'll see. Okay, so just before we talk about the new album, what are you still involved with Redemption? Are you still yeah, of part, course. Of, part of the same, yeah? Of course, I mean, it's, it's never been a, a band where I write songs or whatever. So usually I receive the songs when they're done and recorded, and I just put my solos on them. So it's, to me, it's just, it's more fun. You know, not a lot of work like I do with DGM, but the latest album I also mixed. So I was, 
I was more way more involved than than the previous albums. And yeah, I mean, those guys are friends, great guys, and it's not a touring band. So for yeah. me, it's not a big a big challenge in terms of time pursued in the I mean in the band. Yeah, please say hello to Nick for me and the guys. Yeah, I will. I will. Yeah. So as a producer, I mean, you've you've been you're like you're like the top Italian producer. Like Jacob Hansen is to Denmark. You know, <laughs> you, you do loads and loads of albums, don't you? I mean, do you ever stop? I would love to sometimes. <laughs> for example, this afternoon I was so tired, and when this interview came up, I was like, "Oh wow, I'll take a break." I mean. Sometimes it's it's too much, you know, too much work, and I feel the pressure. But to me, it's impossible to say no because I know the bands care about their album. Like being myself in a band, I know that's an, that I know that an album is the most important thing for a band. And in a band's career, unless you are ACDC, you usually don't do like hundreds of albums. So like I don't know, you do like five, five six, ten in a lifespan, I mean. So every album is like, I don't want to say the usual phrase, but it's a child, you know, it's so important. Then a lot of bands, when when they came to me, they know that they have to wait one year, you know, because my schedule is really busy. And I always feel sorry because they say, oh, it's a lot of time, but we will wait because we like what you do. And to me, that's the best, at least a reward to my yeah, passion yeah. and my work. And that's that's the force that that pushed me to to go on and always and always become a better mixer a better producer even if i mix i don't know like dozens hundreds of songs per year yeah hundreds is more likely it's it's rare that i'm bored yeah sometimes i'm tired you know by the amount of work but it's i'm almost never bored yeah of course sometimes you get some some real crap, you know, you got to say that, you know, not all the bands records perfectly or they, they're not perfect. So sometimes you, it's more like the, the fixing stuff rather than the actual mixing of the songs, but it's a great job. And I, and I honestly, I wouldn't know what to do else. I always did that. I always did that for my whole life. So <laughs> I think I'll be mixing even when I'm be 80. <laughs> okay, and so the album title "Life." Who came up with the title? And did you have any other titles? Yeah, I think this is this is the first time that in DGM story that where I wrote most of the lyrics because usually I'm I'm always the music guy and the other guys in, in the band they take care about the lyrics. But this time, and I don't know, I I felt I felt inspired. Again, even if I, I know I'm not writing poems because my English, you know, Italians, people, English, even even the people that can speak fluently, it's hard for us to write lyrics in, in a different language. So we, we always kind of try to stay on the easiest, you know, you know, side. But to me, it was important because the last three, four years were not easy for me as a you know, health, mental health, and all this kind of stuff that lockdown brought, you know, so I really felt that I needed to express those feelings in form of lyrics. So to me, even if I'm not, again, even if I'm not writing the most like poetic or soulful lyrics, to me, they means a lot. And that's why the title, because life, it's every song, represent to me except a few ones that that are more like abstract or you know one song i was reading asimov books so it was about space you know that that's not about life i mean life in terms of feeling and emotions but to me every song reminds me of a certain period when when i wrote that song so one is more painful one is more joyful one is more anxious one is more whatever so it's it's really that the title was really simple, you know. It's life. It's life. You have bad days, good days, bad periods, and whatever. I mean, I'm looking at the album cover, and it kind of reminds me of Dax Silent Skies. They did this. Is it the same artist who did Silent Skies? No, album? no actually, you, you know no. what I mean. It's very similar. If you yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 
Actually, it's a, you know, I'm a close friend of, of course, of Vikram and, and Tom of Silent Skies because they both in Redemption and I knew Tom since forever and a big, biggest Evergreen fans. And the funny, the funny thing is that he sent me, he sent me all the albums of Silent Skies and Evergreen, always to check, tell me if you like them, which, which are the singles for you, you know, like a friend does with another friend, but he never sent me the cover art. So when the when the two cover were out, I was like, oh, they're similar in color and whatever. But I never saw that one. So no, the guy that did our it's another dream come true for me because it's Travis Smith, the guy that did probably all my favorite bands. You know, like yeah, Sarcotic Walls, Sarcotic Walls, and all those bands. Yeah, yeah. I mean, thousands of bands from Megadeth to to whatever, like Opeth, Devin Thousand, Nevermore, all my favorite bands. And you know, in the beginning, when I reached out to him, I thought, "Oh, he's a big artist. He will ask me like, like, a ridiculous amount of money that I don't have." But we agreed on a, you know, on a budget that we, we could afford, and I was happy to spend even more of my own pocket, on money from my pocket, just to have his name, not his name, but his art to my album. And when it's I saw the trademark, basically. Exactly, exactly. And we also did the next album cover with him. We're we're working on it right now. And it's totally Travis Smith style. And this one, the only thing I told him was like, I want I want it to be minimal because I I feel that the music is so dense of stuff, so many notes, so many parts, so many tracks that I really need the, the, the cover art to be like a opposite, you know, like you have this dance music, but but like an impactful and minimal cover. And I love what it did because everything it did, it does, I love it. So it was an easy, an easy process. So how long did it take to record this album? Or oh, both albums? Yeah, we actually, yeah, right. Because we recorded both album at the same time. So it's hard for me to tell this album only, but you know, the only difference between the the, the the previous the previous albums we always did, you know, like this big chunk of time, you know, we okay, we start with drums and then we go along with all the other instruments. This time we took a lot of time between every instrument, mainly because of you know daily day job of everyone. And my singer had some family issues that he couldn't leave his hometown for months. So things were stressed out. That's why we also we didn't play in the last two or three years because we were waiting for things to happen. So I think we it took an year overall, but not an year recording every day. I mean, I think like 20, 25 days recording spent in divided in, in an entire year, basically. Okay. So how do you see this new album as a progression from the previous album? I think it's in the same on the same line pretty much and we have a few a little few different elements we have a, an instrumental song that we never had before and to me like it's more steve vaish kind of thing and to me it was like you know because when you when you find a, a structure a pattern it's easy to repeat it so i felt in the beginning of this album i felt okay i'm repeating the same pattern but i love the songs I love the, the the songs, you know, they, they make me happy when I was listening to it. So we didn't actually try to force the thing to be different because that's what I was feeling when I wrote the songs. But then, as I told you, I started to write in a totally different style. Uh, so that's 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 the thing. I think the album is it's the perfect conse consequence to the to the previous one in terms of style and sounds. And then the next one will be a little bit different. So I mean, the album clocks in at fifty-seven minutes, roughly. I mean, what, I mean, you've got like ten songs on here. I mean, you wrote most of the lyrics, like you said. I mean, what's your favorite songs from this album, the new album? Mm. I think the first one, Unreal and the, the Sorrow. Yeah, yeah, because I, I see that online that everybody's like loving the second one, the second single to the core, because you know it's the more symphony X. So. <laughs> And also, there, it has a lot of a lot of like riffs and fast stuff. And I know that I'm conscious that most of the, our listeners are basically guitar players or or musicians. So 
usually musicians love when there's more like te technical stuff and and it, it's more up, uh, when it stuff are, it's more tricky but i think unravel the sorrow is the perfect the perfect example of what i like in dgm as a, as a main style you know big epic melodic you know of course there's there's some riffs heavy riff but it's not five minutes of double bass and yeah. I'm a little bit tired of that nowadays. So it's that's the perfect example for me of DGM music. I mean, every musician can can let me be in a drum. I can I can tell a really good snare drum sound. We kind of pick out on that sort of thing. You probably do the same with guitarists. I like listen to your albums. They'll, they'll listen to your turn and yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the the most question I get every day is from fan DGM fans, DGM listener is usually. What amp did you use? What pedals did you use in that song? You know, that's that's the and I love it because it's my even it's my day job too. You know, like to every album I spend countless hours. You know, buying and selling different amps, different cabinets, trying different pedals, and that's what I love the most. Sometimes I I love more making sounds than actually play guitar. You know, <laughs> so it's it's. It's another side of making albums that I love, you know, like talking with people about sounds and testing things, new pedals, new new gear. It's so what great. do you actually play? What guitars do you play? What guitar and amps for people that are a guitarist that want to know? What, what's your mind? I play, I can pick my guitar. It's right there if you want. I go play. Go. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I play this custom Telecaster. Yeah, I've seen you play that quite a lot. Yeah, which is my main. It kind of I mean, looks I... like a status quo guitar, but it sounds heavier. <laughs> what? Say it again. It sounds. It looks like a bit like a status quo guitar, but it sounds heavier. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it started as a as a. You probably know the band Slipknot, of course, and they have the signature guitars, which are which was this one. But I totally, I changed pretty much everything, all the pickups and and colors and whatever. Because you know, I'm a I'm a fan, a big fan of Richie Cotson, the guitar player, and I always like the the look of the tele. And I didn't see many back then when I started using telecasters. I didn't see many heavy metal guitar players playing telecasters. You know, usually it's Ibanez or whatever ESP. And then I try came up with the idea of 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 customizing this this one and. It's great. I love it. I've been using it since forever. And as far as amps, of amps, I have all of them, basically, like Mesa Boogie, Marshall, EVH, PV, Angle. Usually my main one is the EVH, you know, the Van Halen, the Van Halen. I have three different models and I every album I change. Some albums I do with 5150, some albums with 6505 plus. And I'm always mixing cabinets, different cabinets and different amps. So, but mainly, yeah. It's like the Van Halen kind of thing that I love. Okay. Even my pickups, even the pickups are, are the Van Halen Frankenstein, you know, the ratio from the 70s. So, so I'm a big Van Halen freak. Excellent. So are you doing any more promotional videos for this album? Have you got any other any promotional videos you you be doing? No, we did we, we shoot it two, the two videos that are already out. There there will be probably a lyric video when the album comes come comes out, but without the band playing. But we're planning to do something that people really like, you know, the, like the playthroughs. So I'm I'm planning to film a few probably solos or or like to the core song riffing stuff. So they will be out as both as promotion for for the band and for me as a guitar player, of course. Okay, and so when do you think you'll be touring? Obviously, it's not going to be this year. No, because we're I'm joining the band in November. Uh, to do the first rehearsals, so we'll we want to first see if the band still can play after all these years. You know, <laughs> no, of course we can, but you know, it's 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 not like you build the chemistry in a day. So we we want to do a few rehearsals, probably in November and December, and then we already have a few festival planned in the springtime. So probably yeah, like like from February March the next year we'll we'll have some shows hopefully. Are you doing the Prog Power next year? Being invited to do that? No, we're not invited. We hopefully we'll we played there two times and I play another time with Redemption. So that will be. 
probably one of the best experience for a progressive band. So, so we're not there. The... We're not there next year. Hopefully, the next, the, the 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 year after that. So, how's things with you and Frontier Records? You got a very strong relationship still. Yeah, we still have two albums to go, and I mean, no complaints. So they they do what they do, and I do what I do. So I'm not an expert of promotion and marketing. You know, that's. That's a side of the music that I really don't like, you know, spending time of not doing interviews, of course. I love doing that, but planning things and reaching out to people, sending emails. I'm more like, okay, I want to be in my studio recording my music. Then I give my music to you and you do your best. So, of course, every every band, again, they always complain about, no, they should do more. They, we should be bigger. But I think it's a combination of things you you can you cannot only complain about the label you also have to do stuff yourself like going out play 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 shows so i know that if the last album it didn't that good it's not because of the label only you know it's a combination of things and i cannot blame anyone and so it's great okay it's well, Simon, I'd like to thank you for doing this interview. It's nice to see you again. Keep in touch. And do you have yeah. anything to say to the people on YouTube watching this? Oh, just please check the album on every every platform you have, like Spotify, YouTube, buy the album. And we're also having like a, a limited edition of vinyl for the vinyl freaks out there, you know, with the, with the P DGM pick, a signed copy, a signed postcard from the band. And that will help the band you know, raise some funds for all the for all the expenses. And hopefully I'll see you out there on on the stage and off the stage soon. Yeah, I've never seen your band live before. So hopefully oh, wow. you'll, hopefully you'll come to the UK. Yeah, UK. I mean UK we I think we played only two shows when we were touring with Symphony X in 2011, Manchester and London. And I remember clearly London to be one of the best shows we ever did. So but you know, it's it's not easy for us to do. Even Sweden, uh, we've never been in Sweden, Scandinavia. It's usually it's it's always France, Spain, you know, uh, Holland, and but I definitely want to come back to UK. All right, then, Simon. Well, thank you. Have a nice day. Keep in touch. You too. And I yeah, will send you. I will send you this interview. I'm going to put it online in the next two hours. So I'll put it, and then I'll if you can promote it for me, I'd appreciate it. Of course, of course. Right. Send so, me all the links. Send me all the links about whatever I will that I can tag on social media. And all Thank you. Stuff. Brilliant. Thank you, Simone. Have a nice day, and I'll send you the Thank link you later on. Me. Cheers, my Great. friend. Take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank bye. you. Bye bye. -bye.